Hey guys, Alex with Rapid Fire Rundown. Today, we're going to be discussing the LS321 Green by Holosun, a laser aiming module for the rest of us. A lot of you guys really enjoy my videos on my channel for getting into night vision for cheap, whether that be getting an ACH helmet and cutting it down, or getting into a PS14 for cheap or some cheap accessories. This is no different. This is a excellent laser aiming module that is cheap. It's not a $3,000 mall. It's not a $2,000 Steiner unit that's going to prolapse. It is a very respectable IR device. Getting into night vision can be expensive. Uh, that's why I'm wearing the suit today, because it has the perception of you need to be a rich guy to get into it. That's not the case. If you do it intelligently, you can get into night vision for pretty cheap. And that's why we're focusing on the LS321G by Holosun today. All right, so normal disclaimers, like this video if you enjoy the video, dislike it if you hate me, comment down below, and I'll probably respond and call you a loser if I disagree with your opinion. But if you be polite, I'll be polite back to you. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content, and always feel free to put questions down below that I can answer in upcoming videos. All right, let's jump in to the LS321 Green. <clears throat> so, the most important part when it comes to laser aiming modules, in my opinion, in a lot of ways, isn't the power, because civilians are restricted, but it's kind of the form factor, the operation, and a lot of the little things it brings to the table, okay? Towards the end of the video, I'll give some more demonstrations of the power, but this is, first and foremost, a civilian class laser. What that means is you're not going to get IR illumination in an IR laser that's seeable up to 500 yards or even a couple hundred yards. I would say these kind of peak at about 100 yards. Um, that being said, we're civilians, guys. We're not passive aiming, which means using an IR device. We are not passive aiming to 300 yards in a non-peer environment like in Afghanistan. We are doing this mostly for LARPing. However, in a near peer situation, we're probably not even using our IR devices anyway because the enemy could have nods. So I don't really care too much for full power devices. Would I take a full power device? Absolutely. But this is a civilian class device with a lot of merits to it. It's not full power, but I think the price and I think the additional capability that it adds to the table really makes up for it. So why should you be interested in the LS321G first of all? Well, I got this for $700. In fact, I think you can get it cheaper. Holosun is coming out with a new device in the next couple of months, maybe within this year, that's gonna be a little bit different. I'll put a picture on the screen now. It may be a little bit stronger, the Illuminator. Um, it's probably gonna be uh, comparably priced. So the 321G is likely going to be dropping in price. G being green, R is red. Through the LS321 model. Honestly, I'm hoping we can get these down to $500. That's the first reason why you should be very interested in this unit. There are fake PEC 15s, Airsoft PEC 15s, uh, laser speed, and um, I'll put a picture on the screen right now of it, but that can offer full power capabilities, but you keep seeing videos and pictures online of them breaking. This box right here is nigh invincible. As you can see, it is a completely metal design. It's not some dude in a shed with a 3D printer uh, pumping out a laser design. And that's great. I love that civilians are kind of taking the initiative and trying to fill in the gaps where companies aren't. But I want something that is capable and something that is bomb proof or as bomb proof as I can possibly get. And Steiner units tend to have a lot more issues. A lot of other units tend to have a lot more issues. Holosun is kind of known for making pretty reliable products. Even though they're Chinese designs and Chinese created or American designs, Chinese created, um, they have a knack for making very reputable red dots and now lasers. So why else should you be interested in the 321G? Well, the form factor. The form factor is a cube, as you can see. What that means is it allows light to kind of offset in very good positions, right? It's not going to take up too much rail real estate. It's going to fit on a lot of different types of rifles. Um, and it's also not a extremely long device, so it's not going to impede with pressure switches. Um, overall, I think it is a very nice and compact design. 
Furthermore, talking about the design, everything just feels quality. Like I mentioned on those Steiner units, they can prolapse very easily or plastic units can break very easily. Everything here is metal. These little caps right here feel very high quality, whereas I've broken so many different caps for different optics in the past. The windage and elevation is extremely positive and tactile. The button right here, you can see it is taped over, but it makes a audible click. Hopefully you can hear it. I'll hold it up to the microphone. Hopefully you heard that. Um, the adjustment knob back here for the illuminator is very smooth. It has little individual, I don't want to call them clicks, but you can tell when it's moving. That's a little bit of a vibration effect. And then as well as the selector back here, we're changing between IR, IR high, visible, uh, all the different laser types is also fantastic. The pressure pad that comes with the LS321G is also one of my favorites in the industry. Now, this right here is not a 321G. This is a LS420 up here, but I have the Holosun pressure pad right here. And the pressure pad is very tactile. Hopefully you can hear it if I hold it up to the microphone. Maybe you heard that, but it's perfectly usable. So you don't need to go out and buy a Surefire dual lead connector or a other proprietary connector. Um, however, another large pro of the 321G is the fact that you don't even technically need the tape switch, which is a great benefit because the tape switch a lot of the time is better served on a um, rifle light, a weapon mounted light. You're gonna be using it a lot more frequently. The 321G, now, I'm sorry if you're left-handed, but as you can see, my left hand perfectly hits that button. So when I'm aiming this rifle, and yes, this rifle is a little bit weird. Don't make fun of it. It's going to be like an LMG build eventually. When you're aiming this rifle, your thumb can go right over. Your thumb can actuate that laser without the additional tape switch needed. That's a huge plus for people with smaller carbines or even longer rifles where you want to prioritize that weapon mounted light tape switch. This can be a huge plus for you. I happen to run both on my MCX, but that's just because I like to use backups. Now, the illuminator and the IR laser on this are not that strong. I'll put a picture on the screen now. It is a civilian class device. The illuminator does create a uh, circular circle which I know sounds dumb, but some illuminators have a knack for being kind of like oblong. It does create a circular circle. It's not, it doesn't have a, as much of a Petri dish design as I've seen with others. Once again, it's not as strong, but it's consistent. I've also noticed that the laser inside of that illuminator circle is in the middle. Concentric, if that's the right word, it's in the middle of the illuminator, which is huge. A lot of illuminators can kind of lose that zero after a while. This one I haven't seen to be the case. Let's talk about some downsides of the unit. This is where the unit gets a little bit interesting and where you may be swayed to look elsewhere, but the pros, in my opinion, greatly over, over compared to the, uh, the cons of the unit. The first con, um, I mentioned that it is a square unit before. Uh, and it doesn't take up that much rail real estate, but it is very tall. So I'm gonna give you an example of this. This is, like I said, this is my 321G. This is on a lower one third. This is a uh, Sig Tango MSR. So find it and you'll see the height that it's at. This right here, I have to aim completely through the device. If I turn on my laser, if I kind of bring my head up, and destroy the parallax a little bit. I can technically see over the device, but if I am directly in the center of my optic window, my dot actually sees through the device. And that makes for a very bad time aiming, right? Uh, otherwise, we would just use occluded dots all the time if we wanted to have that occlusion. Um, I prefer my dots not, or the window not being impeded by a massive laser. Now, here is a example of a setup that actually works. This is a LS420. This is the same height as the LS321G, but you'll notice that I have a EOTech uh, EXPS3 on a Unity riser. What that does is it makes it so I can't even see my laser, right? I can't even see 
my laser in the optic window. Um, if you are buying a 321G, it's just something to be conscious of. If you have a, I used to run an LPVO, a Vortex Razor HD Gen 2, and I found that especially on an LPVO, lasers can take up the entire kind of window of the optic, and that's just not how I prefer to shoot. I'd much rather have it not be impeded. The second and probably final reason why this unit may not be for you is it does, it is a little bit front heavy. It's clocking in at nine ounces, and I think that is unloaded. Um, and for whatever reason, I just find that, first of all, because you're wearing this on the front of your rail, um, it does happen to make the rifle very front heavy. If you are running a, especially like a piston AR, like my MTX, which, by the way, comes to 11 pounds unloaded. I know, that's absolutely insane. It can really add up. Now that does uh, benefit your recoil control. Uh, having this much weight in the front, especially with a war comp, it makes it so my gun effectively doesn't move. But there are a lot of uh, cheaper 3D printed lasers that are significantly lighter. I'm talking a couple ounces. Um, the last reason, which we've talked about multiple times, is of course just going to be the fact that it's not full power. If you need a full power laser, your options really are a couple Steiners, a couple, maybe an old Peck, or a mall, right? All of which are gonna be very expensive, may have kind of shitty warranties from Steiner, or may not have a warranty at all if it fell off the back of a truck, right? Those are the only cons I can really come up with with the 321G. The 321G, in my opinion, is all we should expect from a civilian class laser. It is rugged, its design is better than most, it is extreme, it's potted, right? It's much better holding together than a lot of Steiner units. It allows that one hand manipulation or it allows a better one hand manipulation than a lot of other lasers. The controls are great, the adjustments great and it's held up to abuse very well. Um, I am gonna be moving to a LS420 from this but it's not because I don't like this uh, 321G. In fact, if I could do it all again, I probably would just buy a 321G but Hollow Sun lost a Glock side of mine and offered me a LS420 that's kind of like an LE model. So I'd be crazy not to put that on my rifle instead. Uh, but if someone was trying to get into night vision, especially for cheap, you really truthfully cannot go wrong with this little unit. Let's take it off the rifle for you guys. Just a absolutely great little IR unit. Hollow Sun has just been kicking the teeth out of the rest of the game recently, right? TreasureCon is still on top for optics, but Hollow Sun is kind of getting close behind. Um, Steiner and uh, I guess a lot of other companies are on top of the illumination game, but Hollow Sun is really catching up, guys. So keep your eye on these units. You should especially be interested in this unit if you can find it for, let's say, five or $600. I'm going to be selling mine for $550 on eBay. Someone already bought it, so you can't go snag it. Um, and yeah, just a absolutely great little unit for the rest of us, for the people that don't want to spend $3,000 on units, right? All right, um, that's it. Uh, I don't really have anything else to say about this other than go snag one if you're into night vision. Don't grab one if you don't have night vision because you're just kind of throwing away money at that point. Go buy a PVS-14 and learn how to aim through the optic. Um, Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content. Uh, like and comment down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next time.